Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with veteran Canadian jazz saxophonist Corey Weeds on his new 2021 CD, What Is There to Say? It is his 18th record as a leader, and there's plenty to say, and it is likely one of his most ambitious projects to date. His inspiration was the great baritone sax cat Gary Smullyan with his 1997 CD he did with strings. This album is a carefully curated set of compositions that showcases why Corey is a master of the jazz world and always a beacon of light. Enjoy the story. So, Corey, hey, man, thanks for the quick turnaround on this. I appreciate it. No problem. You know, like I said before, and I think I've said this over and over, anytime I have Cellar Live or I have Corey Weeds come in the mailbox, I can guarantee that it's going to be happiness in my car stereo for a week, and it's going to be on the show, and people are going to be happy. So thanks for sending the music over. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Thanks for the kind words. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's been a, it's been a big year. You know, and I guess that's kind of the backdrop of all of this. You know, the last time we talked, we were in the midst of the corona and talking about securing funding to keep life going. And it looks like now people are rebounding with wonderful projects, and this sounds like an outgrowth of what you've been doing lately. I say this with respect to people that have been affected by the pandemic much more than I have. But, you know, I'm a jazz musician. I, I, I'm a jazz I'm a jazz guy. I feel like my whole life has been a pandemic, and we're always trying to fight and find ways to survive in the ever-changing world of music. And so, you know, I think my attitude from day one was uh, just keep going. Just keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, in some ways even double down even more because, you know, musicians needed it, and my focus and my whole thing has always been about creating work for musicians and keeping musicians busy so you know nothing really changed for me now having said that i'm very lucky you know i have some funding sources both private and government so i'm very lucky but i mean i also work very hard to get those sources you know so when the pandemic hit and you know there were people out there who are you know financially secure and weren't affected by the pandemic you know they want they want to give me funds because they know that I'm going to get it into the right hands and the people that need it, and I'm going to create lasting projects. So I'm very lucky that way, and it's been a banner year. It's been a banner year for the label, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel blessed. You know, when I played this CD for the first time, I, I was going to an art show on the outskirts of Kansas City. The metropolitan area is quite big, so I was going into Kansas, and I was playing – the CD for my wife, and she was just quiet listening to it. And the teacher I was getting ready to go see was my art teacher from high school. I was going to surprise her. And we're going into this kind of remote area listening to this, and she was just like, who is this? You know, and my, and I, I was just saying what you were saying. You know, this is the guy that's keeping it going for the jazz world. You are consistently not only producing and making this, but you're providing opportunities. You are definitely a beacon of light in the jazz world. And I think that's the thing that's always so refreshing about what you do. You truly embody what you say. Um, and Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank and, you. you know, the one thing that's beautiful about this, which it, it was so, I mean, that, that's our date night. So it was kind of like a, the, the tapestry of, of what we were doing that night. But the thing that's beautiful about this, being from Kansas City, is that whole template of Charlie Parker with strings was really something that kept coming into my brain as I was listening to this recording. Yeah, it's funny, you know, so uh, obviously this recording is generating a lot of attention, and obviously because it's a string recording and because I'm a saxophone player, people reference that recording. And the funny thing, uh, the Charlie, they reference the Charlie Parker recording, and the funny thing about it is that that's not where the inspiration for this particular record came from. Uh, but now, of course, I love the Charlie Parker with strings recording. I love the Clifford Brown with strings recording and and many of the other ones that were done. But this idea was planted in my head because of a a recording done by a baritone saxophonist named Gary Simulian. And he has a record just simply called Gary Simulian with strings. I think what it was specifically about that recording that I loved was the sound. Now, when you listen to Charlie Parker with strings, and naturally, you know, it was recorded, you know, 70 years ago, it sounds quite, I mean, some of it's live, so it sounds quite dated. And, and, you know, the technology was what it was back then. It's also different instrumentation. I mean, he had, you know, he, he was recording with a small orchestra, like he had oboe and French horn and, and harp. 
And this Gary Samoyan recording was not that. This this recording was simply just strings. And there was something that struck me about the sound of that particular recording that inspired the idea behind this project. When I heard that record, I was like, I want to make a record like this. And so I gave it to Phil Dwyer, and I said, this is what I want. This is the sound that I'm looking for, the lush 13 strings. We doubled up on a couple of parts, so it's actually 26 strings. But it is natural that people reference the Charlie Parker re uh, recording, of course, because it's a seminal recording. It was one of the first ones with strings. And But it's it's funny to me because that's not that was not the inspiration behind behind this particular record. And that's the beauty of doing these interviews and this interview series is that every time you talk about these recordings, there's always the truth behind it. There's an, a, an right. assumptive way that the media will pick up on this and say, oh, well, it has to be that, but it's not. And I remember that Gary recording, and I remember it well because Gary was the, one of the first major artists that ever granted me an interview on Neon Jazz. And I am forever oh, wow. indebted to him. Yeah, he, oh, he was yeah, the guy. Yeah. Gary's a sweetheart. He's a sweetheart. Uh, he was beautiful. Yeah. You know, I mean, with, with talking about, you know, what we've gone through over this last year, and, and I remember when we were in the middle of the really going through this and not knowing what the timeline was, not knowing there was going to be a vaccination, not knowing that things were going to get to a point where they're at right now. Is there a level of you that's relieved and so happy to see this project out because there's chances to perform this live and to just move on to a new era of being a musician in this world? It's interesting because, you know, I don't know how much you know about what's going on up here, but, like, you know, the world is in an odd place. I and, mean, of course, we had, uh, you guys had politically what was happening and continues to happen down there. We had the pandemic. We had incredible fires that didn't affect us directly here in, in Vancouver, but very close to us. Devastating fires. And right now, we're in the middle of our worst they're calling it one of the worst natural disasters in Canadian history, I believe, in, in flooding here. And that's hitting close to home. It hasn't affected us uh, in terms of actual floods. But all this to say that the world is, is in a very odd place. And, yes, we have a vaccination. And, yes, kids are, are you know, they've announced the new vaccination for kids. And that's all wonderful. But the world is still in a very, very uh, odd and and scary place. So, you know, and and as far as the pandemic goes, Vancouver has been very lucky. Um, we have a very progressive provincial government who certainly have made some missteps along the way without question. But, you know, they've handled the pandemic really well, better than most places. So we never got the feeling that we were completely shut down and cut off. Having said that... Yeah, I mean, it feels good to be in a place where I might be able to actually pull off my jazz festival and that I put on in January, and I might be able to do a tour, and I may be able to talk to some string orchestras and maybe come and play this music. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a huge relief. It's a huge relief to have the record out and to, to have such a positive response to it. You know, so there is a lot of positivity happening but i think you have to really think about it because there's so much negativity happening in the world still you know and there's a lot of unrest and i think the damage of the pandemic we're starting to see that now you know now that it's kind of i don't want to say it's over but now that it's under control so it's it's still feels like a very odd time in the world without question you know, I think the thing I remember, there was a musician at one point, a drummer in Germany that was like, you know, it was already as though the, co the, the car was on the edge of the cliff with a lot of these things, whether it's, you know, the unrest here with George Floyd or things like global warming that are affecting things like flooding around the world. I, I think that we were always kind of on an edge. And I, I, and, and I think about you, you're a parent. I think about me as a parent. I'm trying to really kind of grasp at some of these silver linings that will, when the dust settles, it'll be good for these kids. And I think for my kids, I have a 16 and a 15 year old. I hope they realize that there's been an importance with the world slowing down of pausing and looking back and being able to yep. reroute, you know, along the lines of what you said with the jazz musician, creatively speaking, jazz musicians, this is the environment you guys, you guys have lived through Corona your whole life. This is what yep. you guys do. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, so hopefully yeah. our, hopefully our kids, 
will go through these things kind of like, you know, so to speak, in America when the 60s were going on, and they learn a level of resiliency and learn a level of strength so as we move forward, things are better for future generations. I think our kids are certainly, I was having uh, I was having a drink with a buddy last night, and, you know, we were talking about kids. We have My kids are younger than yours, mine are 12 and 10, and they seem to be doing just fine. But I can tell you one thing, they're going to be more, they're a hell of a lot more independent than we were at that age. Like, I take them to volleyball tryouts, and we're not even allowed in. So we got to send the, this 10-year, I got to send my 10-year-old daughter in to a volleyball tryout. She's never even been into a volleyball tryout. You know, my, my wife's teaching partner has to send her six-year-old into swimming lessons. He's got to get into his bathing suit and out of his bathing suit by himself at six. Wow. These kids are going to be more independent than we was, we certainly were when we were, th- were that age, you know. So I guess there's some, there is some positivity for sure. But my whole attitude in my, my whole life in music has been I just wake up in the morning and continue to do what I do. And if there's something in the middle of, middle of the road that's impeding my progress, I just drive around it, you know. And that's the way I, I just operate my whole life because if I – if I get too wrapped up in everything that's going on in the world, I'll just get into bed and just lie there and, and not do anything. You know, it'd be really easy to do that, but I can't. Do that. So, you know, so that's that's sort of my mantra, I guess, if you will. Amen. Yeah, and that is the resilience. You know, my day job, I'm an IT technician in a school district, and I was talking to a teacher last year when all of the new kindergartners came in. They all have mask mandates. These kids that are that young don't know anything different, just like your kids. Oh, this is the, you know what I'm saying? So we look yep. at us as old, old men, so to speak, and we're like, we, didn't, we had no idea about this, but this is their reality. They don't know about going to school without a mask. How mind-blowing is that? Yeah, it's, cra- it's, it's, it's crazy to think sometimes that, the, yeah, what, the, what they know, what they've become, you know, what they've become used to, you know, it's just normal. So, yeah, it's mm-hmm. uh, interesting times for sure. It, yeah, I, you know, I've, I've caught up with some buddies of mine that I hung out with in my 20s that were in a big band at the time at Kansas City. And I was like, if someone sat down and told us the world would be the way it is in 2021 or 2020, we would never believe them. <laughs> Not no, at all. We would have laughed. Yeah, we would have laughed. Yeah, yeah. laughed. You said you're crazy. You know, yeah. yeah. Insane. Like, like yeah. what movie is that? I'll watch that. Yeah. So, yeah. But at any rate, Corey, man, thank you for opening up. I'm looking forward, as always, to profiling this new music on the show. And, man, good luck. I, I'm looking forward to catching up when hopefully the world's in a better place. I send my love to Canada. I have talked to musicians that are talking about the epic flooding, and I hope things turn around and we get back to a level of just uh, sanity. Thank you, man. Anytime. I appreciate the support. Love talking. So, yeah, anytime you need anything, just let me know. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in Vancouver, Canada, Kansas City, Missouri, and spots all over the globe giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Corey for always being a strong force in the world of jazz music. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.